signifies unto us the mystical union that is between Jesus Christ and his New Testament churches, which Jesus Christ approved of with his very presence at the wedding at Canaan of Galilee. And marriage is also commended by the Apostle Paul as being honorable above all things. So therefore, it should not be by any means entered into lightly, rather reverently, discreetly, soberly, and most importantly, in fear of God. Into this holy estate, Richard and Angie come out to be joined in holy matrimony. Let's go, Lord, and pray. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful for this beautiful day that you blessed us with. We're concerned about the weather and Angie's health and the health of others, but God, you saw us through it all. Because you were there with us every step of the way and every day. And Lord God, I ask you to be with Richard and Angie from this moment forward. Not as two people, but as one. As one flesh, as the Bible tells us. Thinking and desiring the same things and putting you first in their lives. Praise pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you, Richard, and you and are here for the purpose of being joined in holy matrimony, will you signify, signify this intention of God facing one another in the United Kingdom? They have chosen a passage of scripture that they want me to share with you. And I've actually chosen two. Mark 10 and 6 says, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this cause shall the man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. So that they are no more twain but one flesh. And what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder or divide. The verse that they have chosen is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, verses 1 through 13, which Paul says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not love, I become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, I'm nothing. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, yet have be nothing. Love is patient. That's one thing you'll need to be with each other's patience. Love is kind. Kind words and gestures and things that we say to one another. Love is not boastful or proud. Love is not rude. Love is not selfish. Anything. Now we put each other first. I pray that Richard, you will put God first in your life and Angie second and everything else. And Jack ready to put God first in life and Richard second and everything else. Amber, under that. Because she said she thought that would go over mom. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Family needs to be tight. The way family stays tight, they stay in love with each other, no matter what. It says that uh, that love is uh, not rude. It's not selfish. It's not irritable. Love doesn't hold grudges. That means if Richard would accidentally say something wrong, not that he would. <laughs> You're not going to think about it all day. You're going to say, oh, that's his Richard. <laughs> 15 minutes. You're going to hear yourself 15 minutes to think about it and let it go, right? <laughs> and, and Richard, when Angie says something that you may not like, like tucking your shirt, <laughs> and he did. <laughs> Love does those kinds of things. Love is rejoices not in unrighteousness, but rejoices. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes in all things, and endures all things. Love never. 
we're about to take our vows. And I was concerned because Angie, she called me and said, Brother Dan, can you do our wedding? Oh, thank you. She couldn't talk. I said, that's okay. We'll come up with something that will work. So we have little flyers here. Hers says this, okay? You hold that. Okay. That way if you don't hear her, that's what she's going to say. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I got that back. Richard's first. But I made one for Richard, too. But his is different. Okay. What does it say, Richard? Yes, dear, I'm sorry, and you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't go down. So they're going to hold you to it. I'm going to put that down. You guys can hold hands again. <laughs> Richard, do you think Angie would be locked in the way of life? Yes, I do. Tell her not me. <laughs> Do you promise to love and to cherish her in sickness and in health, for richer or for poor, for better or for worse, and forsaking all others that remain totally faithful to her, so long as you both shall live? Okay. This is your part, Okay? I don't know how loud it can be, so this is yours. Okay? What does that say? I do. There you go. See, that's why we did the little cardboard signs. I bought the black markers for donations later. You know, they'll work for food. But... We'll put that in the And did you take research from your lawful way of custody? Do you promise to love and to cherish it? In sickly sending help for richer or for poor, for better or for worse. And forsaking all others by remaining totally faithful to him, so long as we both shall live. We're about to, uh, Richard and Angie are about to exchange rings. And the exchanging of rings expresses this couple's promise of faithfulness to each other. The unending circle of the ring is a symbol of eternity, <coughs> no beginning, no end. The wedding ring is the outward expression of the inward bond as two hearts unite as one, promising to love each other with fidelity for all eternity. The wearing of the wedding bands throughout the couple's lifetime will signify to others of their commitment to be faithful unto one another forever. This time, Richard, would you please place, place a ring upon Andy's finger? <coughs> I give this ring to you today. I give this ring to you today. As a token of all the promises. As a token of all the promises. That we have made to each other today. That we have made to each other today. And it's also a pledge. And it's also a pledge. Of my endless love for you. Of my endless love for you. These rings are the outward and visible sign of the inward and spiritual bond which unites this man and this woman and this love. And they are beautiful rings. But I think more importantly, they are beautiful people on the inside and outside. And may they complement each other. And may they, when people see Richard, they'll think, where's Angie? When they see Angie, they'll think, where's Richard? Because you're no longer two different people. You now belong to each other. Belong to the Lord's one flesh. May you.
proudly wear these tokens of affection towards one another at all times. And when you feel like taking them off or you're sad or disappointed. Love is supposed to be, it should be, unconditional. These are more than outward ornaments displayed through you, but each time that you look upon them, may they remind you of the love that you will share together forever. Would you join us for another word of prayer as David Johnson is to pray for the couple? For the day. Oh, praise God, the heaven, we come once again with our gifts and our hearts. Come, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to send in the house of the Lord one more time. May Heavenly Father bless all the heaven here. And whatever we can do, we'll take them to one time. May Heavenly Father bless this couple that you are joining together. We pray, Heavenly Father, that let us separate them from the love of God and from each other. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we be together.